Hi, third grade. This is Miss Comers, and this is our lesson for Tuesday, May 19th. It's lesson 21.4 in your blue math book, and it's drawing figures. It's on pages 432 to 435. Before we get started, I want you to make sure that you have this paper right here. Okay, it's the one that's got the letters and whatnot on it. Okay, we're going to need that. You're also going to need a ruler. Um, so that we can draw some straight lines because we're going to be doing this activity right here in just a second. So let's go ahead and take a look what they would like for us to do. It says draw it. You can draw polygons using line segments. Since a polygon is a closed figure, it will begin and end at the same point. Activity one, we're going to draw some of those plain figures. Once again, you need your polygon worksheet, which is the one I just held up, a pencil, and a ruler. On your worksheet, use a ruler to draw line segments from A to B, from B to C, and from C to A. So let's go ahead and take a minute to do that. Grab your pencil and your ruler. Okay, they've drawn A to B for us, haven't they? Then they want us to go from B to C. So I'm going to go from here. To here make sure you're using your ruler and then we're going to go from C to A so we're going to go up to A and I want you to take a look at that figure that we just drew first of all how many sides does it have let's count one two three we know that a polygon that has three sides is a triangle and if it has three sides it also has three angles let's look at step two here it says use a ruler to draw line segments from D to E, which they did for us, E to F, F to G, and we're supposed to go from G to H, so grab your ruler and your pencil. We're going to go G to H, then they want us to go from H to I, so then we're going to put our ruler there and draw a line, and then we're going to go from I to D. So we're going to go straight up there. Now. Let's take a look at this figure. First of all, let's count how many sides we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. And we learned when we were studying polygons that if it has six sides, it's called a hexagon. Six sides, six angles. And finally, let's take a look at step three. Use a ruler to draw line segments from J to K, which they did. Then K to L, they also did that. Now they want us to go from L to M. So use your ruler. So your fingers are nice and straight, not wiggly like mine. Okay, and then from M up to J. And you can see that we have actually drawn ourselves a rectangle on this one. You can see that we have one, two, three, four sides. We also have four right angles. And remember, we've got two sets of parallel lines. And we talked about that a couple weeks ago with the quadrilaterals. Remember, quad means four. Now, if we go back and we look at the other two figures we drew, we've got our hexagon here. It's also got a couple right angles, but it also has some really big angles here. I want you to think and see if you can remember what those big angles are called. If you set up two, you are correct. Okay, they're over 90 degrees. Remember, 90 degrees um, is a 90 degree angle at the right angle, but these are bigger than that. If I were to draw that right there, it's bigger. We look at the triangle and we look at the angles in this triangle they're all smaller than that 90 degrees so we call them acute now let's take a look at this reasoning part it says can a line segment be drawn on a rectangle to form two congruent triangles then they want to know to form two congruent rectangles and we're supposed to draw pictures on our dot paper to explain. So we can go back up to this one that we drew. OK, 
Okay. Now, if, and I'm going to change colors here. Okay, if I take and I split this rectangle and I go corner to corner here, I want you to think about what that would look like. Now remember, congruent means exactly the same size and same shape. If I turn this or rotate it, I can stack them on top of each other. So what's my answer to that question? Can I do that with two congruent triangles? Your answer is yes. Now, they also want to know if we can do that to form two congruent rectangles. So I want you to think for a minute. Okay, what can I do to make two congruent rectangles? I'm going to change my color here again so that we can see. And if I were to draw my line right here, and I could fold that, okay? I could also go back and call that um, a mirror reflection or a flip, okay? If we fold that over, it's gonna be exactly the same, so the answer is yes, I can also form two congruent rectangles, okay? Now, the faces of dot, solid dot figures are polygons. Look to see where these faces meet to find edges and vertices. Okay, I know that the other day we talked about that with Mrs. Burroughs. Once again, we need our dot paper, a pencil, and a ruler. And so this is what you're gonna need to have out. Okay, you can use this side or this side, doesn't really matter, okay? And it wants us to use a ruler to draw a square. Make each line segment four segment units long. Okay, now when they talk about that, it's these little sections. One, two, three, four. It's between the dots, it's not four dots. And in fact, if you notice, one, two, three, four, five, we have five dots, but only four sections because we're counting that little piece that's in between each of our dots. So I want you to take a minute, use your ruler, five dots, five dots, five dots, and five dots, so that we have four units by four units by four units by four units. And what shape have we drawn there? You said square, you are correct. It has four equal sides, four right angles, all that good stuff. Now, we're gonna draw a 3D shape now. We're gonna take that square that we just drew, and now we're gonna draw it into a cube, okay? We're gonna start at this corner. We're gonna go diagonal, and we're gonna go two segments, one, two, but we're actually using three dots, one, two, three, and we're gonna draw that line there, okay? Then we're going to go over to our other corner here, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start on this corner of our square. We're going to go diagonally, and we're going to count one, two, three dots, and we're going to use our ruler, and we're going to go there. And then finally, you're going to go down to this corner, and you're going to do the same thing. It's three dots, but two segments. Okay, so now you have a square that looks like it has these lines on it. Okay. Now, we're gonna take those lines that we just drew and now we're gonna connect them. So we're gonna take and we're gonna draw a line here. And we're gonna draw a line here. Okay. Now, we also are gonna draw some lines to show that we can see inside this. So on step four, now we're gonna take this shape that we just drew and we're going to start in this corner right here right over here and you're going to draw down to this dot right here okay 
Now, we're going to draw those dashed lines. Okay, and if you're not sure where that is, start on this corner. You're going to go up, it's going to be a diagonal, just like what we did up there. And then you're going to draw your dashed lines here. And the reason we're drawing the dash lines is that it was showing that you can see through it. Okay? And those are the faces that cannot be seen. Now, right here it asks, how many faces does a cube have? Well, if we count those, and I'm going to change colors again so that we can count. Okay? We have one, two, three, four, and then we have five, six, okay, so we have six faces, and remember, that's if I'm counting my top, my bottom, and then my four sides, okay, so we have six faces. Now, it also asks how many edges. Well, if I start counting all these edges, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay? Six faces, twelve edges. And then if I go back, and I also talk about my vertices, that's these parts where everything comes together okay if we look at those we have eight vertices okay we've got one two three four five six seven eight and if you're not sure what I'm talking about it's these corners here okay and then we've got this one back here that we can't really see so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now it's our turn to do some work. So let's take a look at what they want us to do. Number one says explain what a vertex is and compare the number of vertices of a cube and a square pyramid. Okay, now remember, here's our square pyramid and we just figured out what we had for the cube. Remember we had six faces, right? 12 edges. And eight vertices. Now, Okay, let's take a look at this one. Okay, if I count my faces, I have the square on the bottom, that's one. And then I have each of my triangles, one, two, three, four. And then we have that square on the bottom. So we have five faces. Okay, then how about edges? Remember, that's where it all comes together, right? So let's go ahead and count. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And then we count our vertices. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, remember a vertex is where a corner, where three or more edges meet. Okay, so if we take a look at the vertices, okay, we've got our circles here and we've got our circles here. Okay, we just said that we have five vertices here. Okay, and they're asking us to compare those. 
Okay, so we had eight on our cube up here and we had five there. If I'm comparing them, I can say that a cube has more vertices than my square pyramid because eight is greater than five. Now, on numbers two through four, you're going to draw each figure on dot paper. Then write the number of line segments needed to draw each figure. Okay, remember, a pentagon has, remember, five sides. which also means it has five angles. And pentagons don't always have to look the same, do they? You just have to make sure you've got five sides and five angles. A rectangle, we have four sides and four angles. Remember, they're all right, right angles, aren't they? And then a hexagon, remember a hex? That gives us six sides and six angles. And that's another thing that can have a lot of different um, looks to it. So if you go back up to what we drew up here, at the very top, or I guess it's on that first page, that was a hexagon, wasn't it? Okay, so we go back here and we take a look. Remember, this is an example of a hexagon, or you have the regular kind like what's in our um, pattern block. It's the yellow um, hexagon where all the sides are equal. And if you aren't sure what that is, that's also a hexagon. And that's a hexagon. Both of them have six sides, but they look very different. Okay? Oops. Okay. Now numbers five through seven, we're supposed to draw each figure on dot paper. Then write the number of line segments needed to draw each figure. Okay, once again, you're using your dot paper, okay? You're going to be drawing a parallelogram. Remember, a parallelogram has four sides and four angles, but on this one, when we go to draw it, what do you notice about these angles? On a parallelogram, we've got some obtuse angles and we have some acute angles. Okay? You can draw it as big or small as you want as long as it has this shape to it. Okay, how about an octagon? What does oc mean? Okay, you think octopus. We've got eight sides and eight angles on that one. Okay, and then we have a triangle. Tri means three, so three sides. three angles. Okay, so you need to draw that. And then for number eight, we're supposed to copy this solid figure on dot paper, and then you're supposed to name the figure. Okay, I want you to pay careful attention. Count your dots and your segments. Okay, you're gonna find a place to start. You're gonna start right here We've got one, two, three, four dots, but three segments. One, two, three. Start there. Connect those dots. Okay. Then we're going to go ahead and do the top here. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots. Okay, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six segments. Okay, then go ahead and come down this corner right here, right there. Okay, and you're going to do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, seven dots, but six segments. And then you're going to connect there. And if you take a look at this top section on this figure, okay, you have a parallelogram, just like what we drew up there. Okay. Then let's go ahead and go down our sides so we can get those drawn in. Okay, you're going to go down right here. Okay. And let's go ahead and count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots. But remember, we've got six segments. We're going to connect those so we hit that corner. Okay. And then we're going to connect from here down to here. And I want you to connect from here down to there. Now, we've got to take care of our dashed lines. Remember, that's the part that we can't actually see. You're going to find this slanted line right here. You're going to draw your dashed lines down. And you're going to do, I would suggest doing this part first so that you know where your dot is. You're going to come down. And then you're going to go across and use that one. And if we take a look at that, what is the name of this figure? If you said that it was a, oops, i got to get my C in there. Let's see. My pen doesn't want to write today. Okay, you said that it was a rectangular prism. You were correct. Okay. For 9 through 14, you're supposed to copy each figure on dot paper, draw the missing line segment so that the figure matches its label. Okay, rectangle, you know you're going to need four sides, right? Okay, so we could connect here and there. Now hexagon, how many do we already have here? One, two, three, four. So I need two more because a hexagon is six. Now there's several different ways you could do that. You could draw across from here, you could join up there if you'd like. Um, you also could go here and up. It doesn't make any difference as long as you have six sides. Pentagon, same thing. Pent means five. So this one's already got three, so you need to draw two more. Now the square has to have all the sides are equal, right? We've got four sides, they're all equal, okay? So if I've got a line segment there, I'm going to have to go here, here, and here. Ooh, this one's a tricky one, a rhombus. It also has four sides. But it's not a square, is it? It doesn't have those right angles. So they've drawn two of those for us. I'm going to give you a little hint. You're going to want to use that dot right there, okay, to draw your other two sides. And then finally, you have an octagon. Oct means eight. They've given us one, two, three, four, five. So you have to figure out where to put the other three. And there's a lot of different ways that can look. It's really your choice. Okay. And number 15, fast facts, social studies. The Olympic flag was first used at the 1920 Summer Olympics. 
there were 2,669 athletes taking part. At the 1992 Summer Olympics, there were 9,367 athletes. Which Olympics had more athletes? And how many more? Okay, this is another one of those story problems that we have to take a look at, correct? Okay, so if we take a look at this, I have to pull this apart. First of all, what information am I looking for? It says, which Olympics had more athletes? And then they also want to know how many more. Okay, well, I've got to go back in there and I've got to find my information. So let's take a look. Okay. There were 2,069 taking part back in 1920. And at the 1992 Summer Olympics, there were 9,367 athletes. First of all, it says which Olympics had more. If I look at my place value, I have a two and a nine. We know 9,000 is greater than 2,000. So we know that the 1992 had more, okay, 1992 had more. Then it wants to know how many more. Well now, I've gotta do a little bit of math here. And if I'm going to subtract, I have to use my greater number to subtract my lesser number. So I'm going to do 9,367 minus 2,669. Okay, go ahead and write that on your paper. Now we're going to go ahead and subtract it. If I take a look at this, I have seven and nine. If I only have seven, I can't take nine away, correct? So what do I need to do? I need to go ahead and I need to regroup. So I'm going to cross out my six here. I'm going to make it a five. This becomes 17. I go ahead and I subtract. 17 minus nine gives us eight. Five minus six, once again, can I take five minus six? No, I cannot. So I need to regroup. So now I'm gonna cross out my three, make it a two. I take that 10, move it over, this becomes a 15. Okay, 15 minus six, I mean, yeah, 15 minus six is nine. Now I have two minus six. Can I do two minus six? Nope, so once again, I have to regroup. I cross my nine out, make it an eight. This becomes 12. 12 minus six is six. Eight minus two is six. So my answer is 6,698. Now, what would my label be on that? What am I counting on both of these? If you said athlete, you would be correct. And finally, number 16, we're supposed to trace the figure shown at the right cut out the figure along the solid lines, that means the dark, dark black ones, and then you're going to fold it along these, the four dotted lines. Tape the edges of the figure together, and what solid figure do you have? So I want you to imagine that, okay? I also want you to tell me what that solid figure is, okay? If this is a package, I'm going to pull these up. Right? I have a square on the bottom, okay? If you said that it was a square pyramid, you were correct. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at your homework for today. And that's RWPW 113. 
says, you can use line segments on dot paper to draw polygons and solid figures, draw a rectangular prism. Okay, so they're gonna walk you through that. Make sure you follow the directions there. Now, when they say four units, that's not four dots. Remember, it's four segments. Okay, let's take a look at that one together. Just to get you started right here. It says a rectangular prism that is four units wide and two units high. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four. Now notice I used five dots and two units high. Okay, one, two, Okay, now in order to make that a prism, remember I've got to draw my other lines in here. I'm going to have to come down. dash lines in to show the sides we can't see. And now we have a rectangular prism. Okay. A cube. A cube that's three units wide, which means we have to use four dots. Okay. And you can look back at your other stuff. I want you to try that on your own, see if you can draw it. That one's a pretty easy one. Oops. And then on the back side here, I just want to know, write the number of line segments needed to draw each of these. You have a square, a pentagon, and a trapezoid. Now remember, when they say line segments, it's really the same thing as sides, okay? So, on this, it says copy the solid figure and name it. So your job is to take a look at this redraw it over here and tell me what the name of the figure is. And that's what this line right here is for. Tell me your name right there. Okay, five, six, and seven. It says draw the missing line segments so that each figure matches its label. Remember, hexagon means six. Parallelogram has four and an octagon has eight. Once again, those can look very different, can't they? And finally, number eight, trace the figure shown at the right, cut out the figure along the solid lines, then fold along the dotted lines, tape the edges of the figure together, and then you just have to tell us what solid figure you have made, okay? And finally, your last little bit here is just a quick little review on missing factors um, on your multiplication. Don't forget about zero there. Okay. And good luck.